This LOS is explain the key properties of the normal distribution. The normal distribution. The normal distribution may be the most extensively used probability distribution in quantitative work. It plays key roles in modern portfolio theory and in a number of risk management technologies. Because it has so many uses, the normal distribution must be thoroughly understood by investment professionals. The role of the normal distribution in statistical inference and regression analysis is vastly extended by a crucial result known as the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem states that the sum and mean of a large number of independent random variables is approximately normally distributed. The defining characteristics of a normal distribution are as follows. One, the normal distribution is completely described by two parameters. Its mean, we use the Greek symbol mu for that, and its variance. When mu equals zero and the standard deviation is one, it's called the standard normal distribution. As a consequence, we can answer any probability question about a normal random variable if we know its mean and variance, or standard deviation, when we assume a normal distribution. Two, the normal distribution has a skewness of zero. It's symmetric. The normal distribution has a kurtosis, which is a measure of peakedness, of three. Its excess kurtosis, kurtosis minus three, equals zero. As a consequence of symmetry, the mean, median, and mode are all equal for a normal random variable. And three, a linear combination of two or more random variables is also normally distributed. The normal distribution. Okay, so when we have a distribution that's, uh, that's normal, approximately 68% of all the observations are gonna fall within the interval the mu, which is the mean, plus or minus one standard deviation. So here we can see 68% uh, of the observations are going to fall within the mean, plus or minus one standard deviation. Here we're going to have 95% are going to fall within plus or minus two standard deviations. And finally, we're going to have 99% of um, all observations are going to fall within the interval of the mean plus or minus three standard deviations, okay? So that's when we talk about uh, uh, a distribution being uh, normal. We're talking about the percentage of observations that are gonna fall within these intervals. Don't confuse that. Later on, we're gonna talk about confidence intervals. Now, I brought that up uh, now. That's a nice to know, not a need to know at this point with regards to this LOS, but I like to bring it up so when we see it again later, it's gonna be reinforced. Later, we're gonna talk about confidence intervals, and that's a range within which we have a given level of confidence of finding a point estimate. So again, if the, uh, if the distribution is normal and we have a, a mean here, that uh, if we take some point estimate, um, we're gonna have a 90% uh, 90 confidence that the uh, point estimate is plus or minus 1.65 standard deviations uh, from, the, from the mean. We'll have a 95% confidence that uh, the random variable is plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations from the, from the mean. And we'll have a 99% confidence that uh, uh, an estimate is plus or minus 2.58 standard deviations from the mean. So these are two different concepts all relating to the normal distribution. One is the percentage of observations that fall under the curve, okay? And then uh, the second is we're gonna move towards confidence intervals, and that's the confidence that we have um, for any normally distributed uh, random variable. Confidence intervals are range within which we have a given level of confidence of finding a point estimate. Again, just to give a quick example of that confidence interval, I'll just, it's so easy to understand with just a quick example. So the mean annual return, normally distributed on a portfolio over many years, is 7.5%, and you have a standard deviation of 14%. So when we look at confidence intervals, calculate the 95% confidence interval on next year's return. 
So we can say next year, you know, based on the past returns of, of an of a average return of 7.5% and a standard deviation of 14%, we can be 95% confident that the return will fall between negative 19.94% and 34.94%. And how did we do that? We did the mean plus or minus 1.96. That's for the 95% confidence interval. We used the mean plus or minus 1.96 standard deviations. And the um, uh, standard deviation was 14. So 7.5 plus 1.96 times 14 is going to be 34.94. 7.5 minus 1.96 times 14 is going to be negative 19.94. Okay, so that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.